What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Rodell and in today's video we're going to be doing a quick intro to the ready opening slash Sucrator opening, in which case white plays this move of knight f3, fighting for the central dark scores without yet using one of our central pawns on the d and or e files and really just keeping our options open. In today's video we're not going to be going super in depth on the lines and variations in theory like we usually do, but really I'm going to try to show y'all the opening options that you have following this move, many of which we've covered on this channel and many that we will continue to. So the big question is, okay, we play this move of knight of three, reaching the ready slash sucker toward, how is black going to respond? Well, look, I mean, this knight on f3 is really only attacking two squares on the black side of the board, and that is currently the square of e5 as well as g5. So sure, we are preventing the move of e5, unless black wants to play the Ross Gambit, and we're also preventing this move of g5, which by the way, is the worst possible option here for black in this position. Although at the same time, it does perform very well in leash chess. I'll have a video on that soon, but really here you're gonna see black usually just start off with a natural developmental move. The most popular options at the master and grandmaster level include knight f6, black doing the same exact thing that we did, as well as this move of c5 with the Sicilian invitation on top of that, we have d5 simply expanding in the center of the board, all of which we're going to cover in today's video. Let's first take a look at this move of knight f6. Obviously here, we's white are controlling those dark squares as mentioned, and here black is returning the favor for fighting on d5 and e4 territory. How do we respond to this? Well, we do have a ton of different options. One of them is this move of g3. There's only a few exceptions in which g3 does not work after this move of knight f3. Here, we're simply going to continue with bishop g2, castle king side put upon on d3, and we have a king's Indian attack, and we're simply off to the race. G3 is a very easy and simple way to play. You can play those six first moves of the King's Indian attack pretty easily much of the time, unless Black tries to throw a wrench into your plans. But if they do this much of the time, they're giving something up as well. So G3 is a solid option. We also have a move here such as D4, right? And if we play something like D4, it's almost as if Black is just playing an old Indian defense Enter this move Knight F6, in which case, okay, we'll play Knight F3 and we're simply playing chess. We can also play this option such as c4 going into an English as well as b3 going into a Larson attack. There's a ton of different options here, a ton of flexibility. This move of knight f3 really doesn't tie us down, so how we play from here simply depends on what black plays and what your favorite approach is against it. So y'all going back to the very first move of the game, in which case we played this move of knight f3 c5 is also a popular option. This is called the Sicilian Invitation, and the reason it's called this is because we can now play e4, and all of a sudden, it seems as if we're just simply playing in an open Sicilian. I mean, if one of you guys were playing in an over-the-board tournament, and I walked past your position and I saw this, I probably wouldn't think that knight f3 was the first move. I would assume that you started out with this move of e4, and again, c5, played this move of knight f3, looking to break through with d4 much of the time, going into an open Sicilian. But I do want to mention, we don't have to play this move of e4. We do have other options. One of them is just playing a move here, such as g3, right, going into that king's Indian attack. We can also play a move here, such as c4, going into a symmetrical English. And on top of that, I mean, okay, we can just play natural chess here. We can play something like e3. We can play something like d3. We can even just feed and shadow our bishop on b2 and continue trying to fight for those central dark scores. We got a lot of options here. I would say that the most popular, though, against this move of c5 is either continuing with g3 with the king's Indian attack or going with e4 and entering into that Sicilian type game. So yeah, we just covered a couple of different moves and the options that you have against it, including knight f6 and c5. d5 is also another good option. We're going to cover that at the end of this video, but really quickly, let's cover this move of knight c6. Now this is called the black mustang defense. I actually made a video on this and I love playing knight c6 as black, especially in bullet time controls because oftentimes here white is simply going to continue with playing a move like g3, pre-moving to g3 and much of the time pre-moving to putting this light squared bishop on g2. But if white does this, we can all of a sudden play this move of e4. And this is one of those rare instances in which pre-moving with the king's Indian attack simply does not work because notice this knight cannot go to either of the central dark squares on d4, e5, or even g5. If we put this knight on h4, I mean, this knight just isn't looking very good. And here, if we play a move like knight g1, black takes full control of the center. And even if we try to undermine it, black continues with bishop f5, ready to meet d takes e4 with d takes e4 themselves. Guys, this is just not what we want starting out the game with white.
So y'all, if you play this move of knight f3 and you do face this option of knight c6, my personal recommendation is starting off with d4. Now true, we could start off with g3 and once e5 is played, continue with d3. This is also a very top tier option, really just playing a reverse perk type game. But really I like this move of d4 expanding in the center, looking to play d5 and kicking their knight around. And here if black plays a move like d5, we're now reaching into the Chagorin variation. There's a couple of different options that you can play here. I personally kind of like just playing a move like bishop f4 and going into a London system type game with a very awkward knight on c6, kind of getting in the way of black's usual plans on the queen side. But we can also play this move of c4, simply expanding on the queen side. And this is a very common position. I personally would warn against playing this move unless you're prepared because oftentimes if black breaks open the center of the board, which is apt to happen at some point, black is gonna have a ton of pressure on our central d4 pawn, not to mention bishop g4 and bishop f3 ideas attacking one of our central defenders of that centralized pawn on the d file but needless to say c4 does work here putting some pressure on d5 but i personally kind of like just playing bishop f4 and going gosh i mean what on earth is your knight on c6 trying to do so y'all going back to this first move of knight f3 if you do see the black mustang defense i personally recommend d4 or if you don't like that option simply continuing with g3 followed by d3 because you do not want to allow black to simply push their centralized pawn all the way down to e4 and mess up our game plan. Now, what about this move of d5? This is gonna be a move that you're going to see a ton. What can we do against this? Well, there's actually a few very interesting options. First off, as always, we got that King's Indian attack with g3, but we also have some other interesting transpositional ideas one of them being this move of e4, going into the Tennyson Gambit. Now, usually, the Tennyson is simply reached with us playing e4, and against the Scandinavian defense, playing knight f3. Here, we simply reverse the move order up a little bit, and we're putting some pressure on d5. This is not a sound opening, but it is fun and can get you some quick and easy ones. I'll show you a trap really quickly here. If black takes on e4, we can now continue with knight g5. And honestly, I think that black has the best success when they just continue here with e5. Go and look, take your pawn back. I'm not going to try to bend over backwards to hold on to that pawn. Take your pawn back, and I'm simply going to have a big advantage in the center. But oftentimes here, black will play a move like knight f6, right? It seems very logical. Let's just develop our pieces and try to hang on to that pawn. In this case, the best move here for white is technically bishop c4, attacking the pawn on f7, forcing e6, followed by knight c3, and picking off that pawn. But guys, if we're playing the tennis and gambit, you might as well go all the way. This move of d3 can get black into trouble pretty quickly. In fact, if you look on the Lee Chess database, the most popular option here for black is simply taking that pawn off the board, in which case we play bishop takes d3, and yet again, the most popular move here for black is h6. This looks like a good move, but this is a huge, huge mistake. I'll show you why in a minute, but even if you don't see this move of h6, but you see another option like g6, or c6, b6, a6, the list goes on and on, we have this option of playing knight takes f7. Whole idea being we're attacking the queen on d8 and the rook on h8. And if king takes f7 is played, we have bishop g6 with check. Yes, we just gave up two pieces, but in return, we say thank you for that queen on d8. And here, guys, we're simply up a queen for two pieces. This position is resignable for black. See, all against this move of d5, one option you have is going into the tennis and gambit with e Another interesting option is this move of c4. Very top tier option here for white, very hyper dynamic, putting some pressure on the center of the board. Here, if we see black continue with a move like c6, there's a lot of different things that we can do against this kind of system. And here, if black goes with the advanced variation of d4, we can always just lock things up with moves like g3 and d3. We can also, against this move of d4, play e3, putting direct pressure on that pawn. Whole idea being if we see a move like c5, we have b4 ideas in the air. And finally, if we see this move of d4, my personal favorite at the moment is this move of b4, simply expanding on the queen side. White seems to have a very nice win rate after playing this option. Notice here how black really can't take this pawn on c4. I don't think that accepting this gambit is a very good idea because we now just continue with e3, right? Attacking this pawn. I mean, obviously here, if black ever continues with a move like bishop e6, first off, this is just very awkward. And secondly, we can just continue with knight a3, and we're gonna be taking this pawn off the board very soon. And here, if we see a move like b5, let's go after this pawn chain right away. Either b3 
or the move of A4 work. We just got to make sure that we're putting some pressure on both of these very far extended pawns. Here, if we see a move like A6, for example, okay, we're just going to take on B5. The whole idea being if A takes B5, thank you for your rook. If a move like B4, thank you for your pawn. And here, if black goes, wow, I mean, they're just offering me a ton of pawns. Let me just take on A4. Well, now they have two sets of double isolated pawns, right? So you're up two pawns, but you got two sets of double isolated pawns and these pawns on A4 and C4, we can literally take whenever we'd like. And here, if we see a move like C6, okay, let's continue by taking on B5 and yet again, going after this pawn chain. We cannot allow black to develop and really try to solidify both these pawns. Let's play this move of knight C3. And here, if black plays a move such as queen B6, yet again, let's go after these pawns with B5. E3, looking to capture on c4. Here, if we see a move like bishop e6, it becomes very evident that black simply cannot hang on to these pawns forever, following knight d4, putting even more pressure on that pawn on b5. And here, if black decides to capture on b3, we have bishop takes b5 with check, followed by queen takes b3. And I think it goes without saying that here, white has the big, big edge, a huge advantage in development and peace activity. I mean, here, if black plays a move like a6, we play bishop takes d7 with check, and we're simply going to win this queen as it's no longer defended. In fact, this is a threat anyways. I mean, even if black plays a move like e6, okay, we're going to take on d7 and capture off this queen. Whole idea being the second this pawn moves as always. Thank you for that rook on a8. And here, if a move like rook b8, trying to get that rook out of the way, we continue with knight d5. There's just a lot of different things that can go wrong here for black. And here is white. We are in the driver's seat while being on the brink of simply winning this thing. See, I'll go back to this position, in which case black plays the move d5. c4 is a top tier option with the ready gambit. And it's really a good option for you old Benoni defense players. On top of that, Banco Gambit players, I could list more openings. But this move of c4 really does give us some nice transpositions, even openings that we would usually play as black, but with an extra tempo as we're playing with the white pieces. The last option I wanted to show you against this move of d5 is simply playing knight c3 with the reversed Mexican defense, really the black knight's tango, but with the white pieces. What we want to have happen here is black start pushing their pawns like crazy, d4, f5, etc, etc. We're going to cover that in just a minute. I think the big problem with the reverse Mexican defense with knight c3 is that black can just continue here with a move like knight f6, right? Black can just go, okay, I don't know why you're in such a rush to develop your knights, but I'm just going to keep playing normal, you know, knight f6, e6, c5, etc. And all of a sudden our knight on c3 looks a little bit silly, and it seems as if we played this move a little bit too early on. And look, even then, even if black does all this and does not push their pawn, on d5, we're still going to have a solid game. I'm not going to sit here and say by playing knight c3, you're simply giving up a lost game. In fact, if you're a Chogorin defense type player and you do see this move of d5 against the move knight f3, play knight c3. There's really nothing that you can lose by playing this. If black doesn't want to push and plays a move here like c5, you can push with d4. And now you're playing a Chogorin defense, but with an extra tempo as this knight is on f3. Big, big edge there when playing white opposed to black in the Chagorin defense. And notice here, if black does continue to push with d4, we can now play knight e4, centralizing both of our minor pieces. And here, if black continues to throw their pawns at us like crazy with f5, okay, let's play knight g3, bringing our knights to the king side of the board. And notice here, black can actually continue with e5. I do want to mention, if black does play this move, do not fall into the trap of taking this pawn, because now black can play f4. And white now only has two safe squares for this knight. If we play a move like knight h5, okay, black's going to play queen g5 and simply attack both our knights. We're going to lose one of them. And if knight e4, the same exact thing happens. This queen d5 move is played. And guys, both of these knights are simply hanging. We cannot hang on to both. Very, very tough position for white to work with. However, going back to e5 again, do not take this pawn, but instead just continue with e3. Start trying to undermine the center as much as you possibly can. If black wants to play something like c5 now, they actually can't because we can take on e5 in that case because f4 is no longer possible as our pawn is on e3 defending that square. And here if we see a move like pawn takes on e3, by the way, the best option for black, we're now going to take towards the center of the board, play a move like bishop c4, preventing black from castling in the future. And guys, black is going to be very uncomfortable in a position like this much of the time. Just another option that I wanted to show you guys with the reverse Mexican defense coming out of the ready opening. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to learn how to play the King's Indian Attack, which I referenced to many times, click that video to the left. If you'd like to learn how to play the Tennyson Gambit, not sound, but it is fun, click that video to the right. Leave a comment down below to let me know what other videos that you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.